welcome back. It's Cape Rugby TV. Um, and of course, uh, every Wednesday night, we talk about what's happening in the world of club rugby and the extensions of there, there of at least. Uh, big thanks to our partners on board with us. Uh, Score Energy Drinks. Uh, of course, you know, Score on board with Western Brothers Rugby and the Western Brothers Club Rugby Sevens. Uh, MCAM 24 Hour Pharmacy on the corner of N1 and Durban Road. And of course, Iceberg Air Conditioners uh, and Compressors. You would have seen that logo behind me right now. Before I tell you what's coming up on the show tonight, let me introduce you to my panel uh, this evening, Jerome Parvati. Jerome, welcome back. Nice to have you here. Yeah, JP, good to be back again. It seems like like yesterday we were here, but yeah, good to be back. Time flying. Yeah, I feel like you just said those words to me a few seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Faisal Felton, nice to have you back, Faisal. Yeah, no, good evening, JP. Good evening, listeners. Always good to be back. New year, new challenges. Looking forward to the year ahead. You guys got uh, your hands full already? <laughs> no, definitely. I think the excitement is there. A lot of the clubs, uh, you know, in terms of planning, preparation, in terms of, you know, what, what lies ahead. And uh, I think from our side, you know, we're looking forward to a, to a season of rugby. Yeah. Uh, the dynamics in terms of how and what that we will, you know, we'll obviously decide and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, we've got a full show for you tonight. We went down to False Bay Rugby Football Club. They're busy with their practice sessions. Uh, preparing for their match against Martins. The ladies are in training, and uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. We also went down to St. George's. We went down to Strand Rugby Football Club, and we're going to take a look at Jerome's Curry Cup guys in action. And then we'll, of course, be chatting to, um, to Faisal a little bit more about uh, Western Brothers Rugby's preparation for the season and what's going on behind the scenes. But let's go now. Let's go straight down to False Bay Rugby Football Club and take a look at uh, what Jono and the boys are up to. Yes, the tournament went on for two months and then when we finished, uh, I didn't want the guys to stop all the good that we had done. So we carried on training and we went right into November and December and then we gave the guys a four-week break. So, But you'd be amazed uh, what some guys can do in four weeks and then we've hit January running and yeah, the guys are just excited to have some rugby. Yeah, look, the, the varsity years have been training for three months already, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, they, they're about three weeks out before the competition starts. So they're looking to hit their straps and looking for some cohesion. We're kind of starting out, so we're looking to see where we're at from a conditioning point of view. But also nice for us to test our combinations because we've got a lot of old guys, new guys, young guys, guys that are working and so on. Um, so it's very nice um, to, to, to play against the likes of UCT and, 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 and Marty's on Saturday. Yeah, I think I think the last time we spoke was just before our tens, our internal tens competition. So as a club, I think we've been raring to go. Um, like I said last year, we managed to get a few guys together and have that tens tournament. And now we've come into the new year, and it seems like there might be a season up ahead. You can just tell from the numbers that we've got down at the club that guys are buzzing and guys are excited. Yeah, like I said, I think we've been raring to go for a very long time, and. You can only play against your teammates for a certain amount of time and then you want to obviously test yourself. So all the, all the work that we've put in in the past couple of months, I think it's nice to be able to, to get UCT to come down to our fields and, and, and practice a few of our scrums and a few of our strike plays against them. It also helps them prepare for the Varsity yeah. Cup. So it's nice to have that community uh, where you can call on your fellow clubs in the area to come together and you can always just train against one another. Just different faces. Um, again, the rugby community is massive in Cape Town, so why not use the resources if they're available? Yeah, definitely from two seasons on rugby. Um, uh, back in 2021, 2020, so was it my one of two friends and now it was rugby. Um, hier bij Vaasbeet is nooit op een oefen nie, ooit my altijd um, time vast gehou en deurgedruk. 2021 ook maar één of twee vriendjes en alles was weer oor en dat is nou weer terug is en is ook maar. Ja, ja, die manne is, is honger vir rugby, um, maar ek is blij dat allemaal daar kom vir jou te oefening toe, ons numbers is daar en hopelijk speel ons rugby hierdie jaar en dan kan ons het daar vanaf wat. Faisal, 
let's start off with you. Um, there's a good example of a club that's getting ready for the season. Uh, False Bay is obviously excited to to get back into action. They one of the clubs that were, in fact, one of the, I think they were back already on the third, where some of the clubs came back the following week. Um, is this the kind of messages that's coming through the wires already? Clubs getting ready? No, definitely. I think if you look at, you know, you see the clip, you'll see the numbers. Um, it's good to see the guys out there on the field and that there. I think, like like we said, you know, we have COVID. That's a new norm. We've got to live with it. And I think, you know, it's good to see the guys, you know, especially, you know, a lot of the clubs have got protocols in place. And it's just most importantly in terms of adhering to their protocols. Yeah. Uh, Jerome, some of the footage, of course, that we're looking at there is uh, some bag work and so on. False Bay's uh, got a preparation match against Marty's on Saturday. Um, I, I suppose at this stage they'll be looking at um, giving Marty's a, an opportunity to get ready for the Varsity Cup, but also for themselves to get ready for the season. Yes, uh, uh, we also know Falls Bay is one of those clubs that's been busy um, since last year. And it's good to see that they're on the field. And also with what they're doing there with the bags, I think they're just busy prepping their guys to get contract, contact ready, uh, which is good. And also they got a game on, 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 on Saturday coming against Martis, which is, which is good. And um, I, think, um, I think they will be ready because I know Martis has also been busy for quite a while. So it would be good to see um, the result on that game. Not that it matters, yeah. but just to see <laughs> in terms of where Martis is with their, with yeah. their prep and where Falls Bay is with their prep. Um, Jerome, the, 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 at this stage of the game, if we look at... Uh, the uh, time frame before the first friendlies, before the first fixtures. Do, do you, is this the time of the year now that we start seeing clubs um, moving away from strength and conditioning into ball skills and hand skills and hand-eye coordination? Yes, I would, I would say well, so, JP. Also, also what it changed a lot, as Faisal was saying, with, with, with COVID, it changed a lot of, of in terms of you don't have that luxury of a long sort of pre-season uh, which the guys used to have uh, because they were limited in, in certain things that they could do and the amount of people being yeah. together. So I think what the clubs are doing now, I mean, we also had to do that at, at sort of professional level, um, get straight into the rugby, but you have to manage the guys, like what they were doing with bags, what they were doing conditioning. And it's amazing to see how quickly the body adapt and mm. how the mind adapt and how the body adapt. And, I mean, guys are playing. It's it's January. It's with, I mean, clubs normally won't play in January, mm. Faisal. Yeah. So they're playing. So you can adapt, but you still have to, uh, um, the risk of injuries, you still have to minimize that. And obviously now with bigger squads, they will m rotate more so that guys are not exposed to play 80 minutes, but maybe 40 minutes or 25 minutes. Uh, Faisal, staying on that point, um, well, I think kind of what Jerome is also talking about there is and i know that it, it was last year or the year before in fact that you guys took a lot of a, a quite a deep look at the strength and conditioning of the clubs and you gave them that four weeks to get ready and then you gave them another four weeks to get ready again um how much attention should the clubs be paying here nowadays to strength and conditioning no definitely i think you know with COVID, you know you had the strength and conditioning program in terms of phasing in and that and i think what has happened now is we've learned a lot and I think we've come a, a long way, you know, since we had the start of COVID and that. And I think, again, like Jerome says, you know, the responsibility and accountability is on, you know, on the club as a yeah. whole in terms of planning and that. Day. And I think the one key thing is where everybody's working towards and that there is hopefully, you know, we have some sort of certainty that, you know, the season will start the first week of April, that clubs have something to work towards. Um, you know, in the past, it was a matter of playing games. I'm not sure when COVID's going to, you know, lock down and restrictions will be applied. So I think the one thing, looking at everything, looking at COVID, I think we're quite certain, you know, the one thing we will have is a, is a club rugby season. Um, the only challenges you have is when you have spectators and spectators coming back in that. So I think from a strength and conditioning, you know, the clubs have at least have the assurance now to start building and phasing in, like Jerome said, to moving towards um, yeah. playing friendly matches and that. So you have adequate time. Okay, folks, we're going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to stay at Falls Bay. When we come back from, uh, from the break, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the women's rugby. Zoe and Deanna, the team at Falls Bay, is doing some incredible work. We'll be back in a sec. <music> Welcome back, folks. You're watching Cape Rugby TV in studio with me, Jerome Parvat and Faisal Felton. And before the break, we were taking a look at Falls Bay. They're, of course, preparing for a friendly match against Marty's. One of the uh, very exciting elements that we have seen 
in uh, Western Province Rugby over the last two years is the growth of women's rugby. We stay at False Bay, where Zoe Nadia and the squad are busy uh, getting the wheels back in action. Really happy, hopefully this year we'll be back on the field again. Last year was horrible having to organise matches and then it being cancelled, um, rightfully so, of course we've got to keep safe. Um, but I'm really hoping that all these ladies get a, get a chance this year to show their talent. Yeah, so um, it was difficult starting during a pandemic. Um, it started with just me and you know through the growth of the team we've got two lovely new assistant coaches and also um, head coaches that are helping out. Um, I think that's also how our numbers are getting so high is because we have that assistance from people. Um, we need more. Um, you know, we've got 40 ladies down tonight and there's only three of us. Um, I think we need at least two more coaches. Yeah, so I think there's also a lot of teams now um, going into social media, which has now brought up like people's thoughts of like do women actually play rugby and I think social media takes a what well, is a big part in why women's um, rugby is growing um, like the you know the <laughs> Premier League being shown on TV that was amazing half these ladies watched it on TV and said I want to be that next the next person wearing that jersey so um, I think it's amazing the growth that's happening and I think we need to keep it going Well, the, uh, Faisal, um, False Bay's had exceptional growth uh, in women's rugby. Zoe Nodia is one of your star champs, um, obviously, um, at uh, False Bay. Um, no. And uh, we saw False Bay last year with Zoe, I believe, starting off with five, uh, five athletes only and growing up to 60, 70 women that were coming to practice. I mean, they're doing, they're doing a pretty good job. No, definitely. I think Zoe's, you know, taken, you know, uh, bull by the horn and she's driving it and like you said she's a champion there and she's you know she's going out you know uh with especially with the ladies it's not easy you know a lot of the ladies not coming down to the field not certain in terms of you know uh the club actually functioning and having a women's teams and yeah. that but i think what what she's done is actually gone out into the areas and driven the program and that there so we've seen a huge number uh you know of ladies coming and playing i think the one key thing was last year when the springboks played and you know uh being visible uh with the ipl and also with the end of the year tour that we had and that i think it's given you know the women's game uh much needed growth and that then uh, you know the one thing is i can tell you now it's going to be competitive and i think after the world cup we're going to see a huge boom so from a club side <laughs> the numbers are growing and uh, the interest is growing so we're looking forward to it as well jerome your feeling yeah no look um, if we just talk about Zoe, um, um, what she do, um, I mean, she played, she ref, and then I, last year, the, just early in December when we had our level two coaching course, she was there. So she's one of the ladies that always upskill herself. And I think she just have that in her to draw people, which is good for women's rugby. So we need more of that, JP, that she's always trying to upskill herself. And the Faisal, um, the Women's uh, Rugby Collective, yeah. the, the, the mission at Western Women's Rugby to grow women's rugby, that obviously carries on. No, definitely. I think where we are now at the moment, you know, the, the Springbok ladies were busy now for the last two weeks. They've been active. They've got a training camp that's taking place. The next step now is our Western Province high performance with provincial team coming together and getting the club. So we are going to be meeting with the clubs now, the ladies, the champions, getting that collective going again. Yeah. Um, again, you know, it's just getting everything up and running and getting the hype, uh, you know, uh, happening again. And one of the, yeah, one of the, um, one of the, the key things that you guys did last year uh, was the uh, asking clubs, each club to have a woman's representative to drive databases right. and memberships and sign up. I mean, you had a lot of success there as well. Uh, we saw some fantastic stuff happening. Oh, well, I mean, I, a lot of clubs, I mean, if I think about what happened, was going on at Easter Review, getting the, the women in like full swing, uh, recruiting players, doing outreach projects. Uh, they got a donation from, from the, the Kulisi Foundation. Yeah. I mean, you really saw, saw some good stuff. 
No, definitely. Um, as I said, you know, we're going to try and tie in everything so yeah. that, you know, there's activity happening all the time. So what the Women's Collective is getting them involved from a coaching perspective, getting them involved in a regional. So the whole intention is we want to look at sevens, tens, ultimately building up into fifteens and, you know, having regional sides playing and then the provincial. So it's sort of like a high performance um, talent ID that we'll be looking at. So I think, you know, from the from the collective and that there, uh, there's going to be a number of projects, obviously, you know, which are solved with the workshops that we're going to be, we've got planned as well. So, yeah, we're looking forward to a bumper year ahead, um, I think, especially with the ladies and the World Cup happening as well. So, Faisal, obviously, the big thing that everybody's talking about is uh, season. Are we going to have a season? Will there be fixtures? Uh, let's just talk about that for a second. We're gonna, obviously, we're going to talk about some of the friendly sure. planning, what the clubs are busy up to. Um, yeah, straight out of the bat. Straight question. Do you think we're going to have a a season this year? No, I think from our side, definitely we will have a season. Um, you know, from our side, you know, being COVID compliance officer at the union, especially at, the, you know, matches yeah. and stormers and that, I think from a club perspective, we can definitely have a season. In terms of playing of rugby, it will happen. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, whatever happens, you know, the only challenge, like I said, is the spectators. But I think we've, we've also looking at countering but it. But it's, it's your intention. I mean, without knowing too many details right now, it's still early days. We're waiting for a lot of announcements. We see what happens. But it's your plan for 2022 to get the Cubs back in this, uh, back on the park and have a league structure season like we've had. What is that? What's the plan? The plan is first week. As normal in April, the season will start. Right. Um, okay. The discussions that we have, we have a meeting on Monday with the clubs where, you know, we'll put a number of proposals put through where the clubs need to make decisions. Um, I think the one thing is, you know, for discussion might be, uh, only challenge would be basically the amount of uh, teams, you know, which the clubs need to decide on. I think we've When you got talk about the amount of teams, do you mean amount of teams at a club or do you mean the total amount of teams across Western Province or? Look, the, the key thing is everything is because i think a lot of people maybe fans or viewers don't understand clubs have a first team a second team maybe you have an under 20 third team, team under, uh, and then under, under 20. so we might have an approach where we looked at when the, we had the draft um and i think the key thing is we need to understand a lot well, of the clubs have struggled when it came to COVID and spec, you know yeah. uh, players especially getting down to the field so i think when we meet on the 30th it's basically doing assessment and i think we need to be you know take cognizance that no, you a guys lot will of work numbers, that out on the day yeah definitely i think but again you know what we what we're working towards there will be rugby yeah i think that's yeah. one sort of certainty hopefully that we will have so Ram, of course in line with what Faisal was saying now is that there will be rugby now that now is the time so, so let's go Faisal, let's go back to you are clubs are allowed to be playing friendlies at the moment yes Okay. So basically everything will still go through the union. You'll still get permission right. uh, from a club perspective, normal protocols, COVID, everything will be in place. And that's from important. Rugby, you can play. So that's important from a, uh, an endorsement point of view, from a making sure you've got referees point of view, 100%. a safety aspect. You can't just go out and play yeah. without it being authorized. I think the one thing that we need to also get clarity on is that even though the regulation stipulates and says you may have up to 2000 spectators, Clubs need to understand with that comes a number of, you know, permits, uh, protocols and stuff that needs to be in place. So the way we have operated in the past where COVID wasn't around, it was easy, you know, in mm. terms of having those games. I think we need to understand is that the moment you're going to start having spectators, you need to have the necessary permission and regulations that need to be in place. But rugby can happen. So Jerome, let's go back to you then. Going on the basis of what Faisal was saying here. Uh, we now know that clubs can have friendlies, uh, provided they're, of course, approved and endorsed by Western Province Rugby. How important is it to get those friendlies in now, before April, before the league starts? Uh, JP, um, I don't want to sound selfish, but I can't wait for the clubs to start, because um, <laughs> the Curry Cup ends in June. So, for me, it's very important that the guys start to, start to play, because come injuries at the URC, injuries at Curry Cup, we're going to need and we rely a lot on our clubs. Yeah. So from that perspective, I can't wait for them to start going around to clubs when they play uh, and just to see, to take sort of stock who's, who's available, who's there and the fitness levels of the guys. So it's very important for us, as Faisal said now, that the clubs, they must start now. I can't wait for them to start. We need them to start because we're going to run out of players and we're going to need players. 
Right, folks. Well, of course, as you know, we have a new partner on board with us, Iceberg Aircons and Compressors. And, uh, of course, you can find them in uh, Montague Gardens and Stickland. Now, of course, Iceberg was established back in 2009 when a number of individuals came together and combined 30-plus years of experience in the air conditioning field. And they've grown to become specialists in their field. And, of course, they're able to now offer their clients custom solutions to suit their needs in air conditioning. And, of course, they've been able to work with real top-notch high-level corporates like West Bank, Stanek, Imperial, and with uh, vehicles and brands like Hitachi and Porsche. So some serious big names there for where uh, Iceberg, Aircons, and Compressors are um, involved. And of course, they specialize in aircon installation, customization, service, repair, regas, reconditioning, and of course, spare supply. Uh, they supply uh, air conditioners to uh, cars, trucks, buses, helicopters, plants, machinery, mining equipment, of course, home and office as well. And a number of custom services also available from Iceberg Aircons and Compressors. Well, folks, the good news is that uh, Iceberg Aircons and Compressors are, in fact, currently running a promotion for you to win a prize to the value of 1,500 Rand. Now, this... Uh, Air conditioning prize includes uh, regas, oil replacement, dye replacement, leak detection scan, a pressure check, a filter exchange, diagnostics, and sanitization of the aircon system and interior cabin. Who would have known that a car air conditioner needed so much maintenance? Well, certainly you can get your air conditioning maintenance resolved there at Iceberg Aircon and uh, Compressors. Now, this prize is worth 1,500 Rand, and all you need to do to enter into this competition is um, you need to like their Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Iceberg Aircon and Compressors. And just go to the page, and uh, of course, you must comment so that they know that it's you, and you have to hashtag hash Iceberg Aircons and uh, Cape Rugby TV, and then just tag three friends and they will announce their winners on the uh, 2nd of February. Remember, uh, terms and conditions apply and of course, don't forget um, that this prize is for cars. So, uh, it fits perfectly if you are a car driver or if you know somebody who's got a car and you need to get your air conditioner sorted out, then Iceberg's got a prize there to the value of 1,500 Rand. So, go to that Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Iceberg um, uh, and uh, compressors. All right. So, of course, we'll also post that on our Cape Rugby TV Facebook page. We'll take a break. When we come back, we carry on talking club rugby. Back in a sec. Don't go away. Welcome back, folks. Cape Rugby TV in studio with me, Jerome Falvato. Jerome, um, I actually completely forgot what I wanted to say to you, but it's nice to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. And Faisal Felton, you're also very welcome in the studio with us. <laughs> Thank you. We are, though, wondering when you guys are going to bring in catering into the studio, you know, coffee and biscuits and rusks yeah. and things like that, if, or is that our responsibility? JP, you know, you're quite good with sponsorship. I was wondering if you can't yeah, get maybe workshops. some somewhere with all your connections, is there somewhere, somebody out there with the, with the coffee shop or coffee something shop? just to sponsor you? <laughs> Folks, welcome back. We can see the club rugby Gios is back, and it's, of course, what, one of the things we love about rugby is banter. Um, I mean, Faisal, I, I, you would agree with me that most, probably, and Jerome, you as well, probably most conversations happen after the game in the parking lot and carries on for hours and hours into the into the midnight. No, definitely. I think you know that's the good thing about club. You know, on the day there's a winner and loser, but the one thing is, you know, that family and you know afterwards the banter, as you say, as you say. And I think yeah. a lot of the guys have been missing that with COVID. Well, I was going to so. ask you. Do you think that I mean, if we just look, you know, a lot of people didn't understand what the clubs were doing during COVID. They thought because there were no games, there was no activity. But it's that sort of interaction, that sort of banter, that sort of social cohesion that was keeping everybody connected. People were looking after each other. People were talking. The family structure of club rugby stayed there. No, definitely. I think the wives and the kids, and you know, they've had enough of the husbands at home now, so they need to get back out on the field. So, I think from that angle, everybody's excited. Everybody, you know, is getting back into that routine and of it, you know rugby on a Saturday, starting early yeah. morning, chopping early morning, and then I walk to the field. 
but also the network. I mean, Jerome, you mentioned that now, you know, you talk about people have sponsors and people have friends in the, in the space. People know each other in the community environment. The network that during the COVID time that people were able to rely on, they were able to phone each other for help. This is a network that got established because they play rugby against each other. Is the, the ability to be friends and friends and family were really what was looking after each other during this, that lockdown period. Yes, uh, it's, as you say, JP, and, and, and also that friends and family and within that club space is guys were uh, guys were also trying to sneak in some games <laughs> which they were not supposed to do, no, but you well, couldn't uh, stop that. But that's how that's how that works. Yeah, like with friends and they they talk and they want to do stuff, but that's what we need in the rugby. So we yeah. can't stop that. Yeah. I think also, JP, the one thing is, you know, during COVID, especially with people, you know, we must also remember a lot of people have passed on, yeah. has brought a lot of the club people closer and that, and, uh, you know, it was, for me, that was great, you know, when, the, when there was people that have passed on, you know, the clubs coming together, supporting each other, you know, going out there and that there. So I think that was also, you know, during those tough times, uh, it's also taught us to be a lot more closer. And I think we've learned a lot, um, especially some of our administrators that have passed on, you yeah. know, strong members within the club structure. So. Some of the clubs going back, it's going to be difficult, you know, members that they've lost and that they, um, but I think the key thing again, you know, it's just getting back on the field on a Saturday, building that community, building that family again. And I think, again, that's what club rugby is about. Yeah, we, we saw some incredible stuff over the last two years. Clubs reaching out. Uh, I mean, Jerome talks about um, from a rugby perspective, but we saw uh, people helping each other with income, people helping each other with food, basic essentials. It, it really was incredible. One of the clubs that was doing fantastic work over the last two years, of course, and before, St. George's. We went down to St. George's uh, this week to catch up with them at uh, practice. Yeah, I guess by excited. Um, the boys was by excited. The coaches was by excited. Um, Die liefde is hier voor die rugby. Um, ik denk als ik zei dat hoor in Elsie kan niet die wacht om mijn eerste game te spelen weer na een lang tijdje. Het is meer motivatie ja, in de jongsters. Het is een beetje fitter als ons. Het is nu die zevens mannen en dan zijn die tatsies mannen. Zo um, so hulle ook was op die tonen. En voor mij is het vooral, het laat voor mij nog meer harder beweeg. Ja, het is baie gelukkig om terug te kan wees op die veel en om weer rugby te kan speel na 2 jaar en vooral nou vir die preparatie na Westbank toe. Het is baie gelukkig en ons wil net, ons wil net zo. Ja, na die liga toe, dat is waar na toe ons werk. So dat is ook om ons nou al die toernooie moest nou aangaat wat ons had daling ook speel hierna. So die main ding is die fitness en conditioning. Dat is waar in ons werk, ons het een doel waar ons wil bereik einde van die jaar as die leeg klaar is. Die mikpunt is Superliga A. Ja, ons is baie excited hier by St. Joseph's Club. Ons het een nieuwe coaching staff, wat vir ons baie dinge doen, wat ons baie vir die jaar nou voorbereid. Ja, die manne is baie excited om te speel, na drie jaar. Hulle gaat nou vir hulle geniet op Westbank, hulle is die kampioene. Ja, ons is baie competitive wat ons wees vir die leek, en ons weet hard as een team, as St. Joseph's Rugby Club, en ons sien uit na 2020. Ja, definitief weer eens. Um, die ouwens is ook baie excited. Uh, so, um, dit was twee jaar, was twee taf jaar gewees wat ons basis niks kon gedoen het. Um, ons, vir ons, ons belangrijkste uh, mikpunt op die oomlik is net om die ouwens fokst te kry, kondiesen weer bykie op te bring uh, en is in die staf. Want um, baie van die ouwens het dagelijkse werke, hy kom in die ane sessie, half 7 by die huis, dan moet hy nog oefen vir hulle toekom, maar die guys, die boys is excited, hulle, hulle sien uit vir 2022. Ja, ons, ons hoop maar net, ons, ons hoop maar net alles bly soos het, soos het nou is, uh, ja, allemaal die clubs het nou vriendlies gereel en al die, so, uh, maar ek, ek dink, het, het, dink is al, dink is al recht kom, moppelik, uh, um, begin die liga soos hulle sê die 2 tweede, tweede april, as ek recht is, so, um, 
Kom ons kyk, ons hoop, ons hoop maar ons, ons, ons delay van twee jaar is voorbij en ons kan een beetje rugby speel en die community weer nader trek. Dat is die belangrijkste ding, want op een zaterdag, as jy, jy was al hier geweest al Renzel, dat is drie, vierduizend mense op een zaterdag en dat is wat die community mis. So, um, hoppelik, hoppelik vind die rugby plaas. George's Rugby Football Club in action, um, and of course, uh, uh, Faisal, St. George's playing Super League B, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, you know, it's, it's tough for guys to assess and see who's who in, uh, in terms of which league and, you know, where they're playing and that. Yeah. So I think from St. George's side, um, they've always been a, a team that's, you know, has been on top and, you know, looking forward to, you know, a good season ahead for them as well. Jerome, just looking at some of the practice there, uh, what we're seeing there, of course, uh, the battle ropes. Um, are we are we again, if we if we go back to that, what Faisal mentioned earlier on about the drought, for example, uh, we saw a real push there because players weren't allowed in the field, a real push there for the increase in functional training equipment. Players using uh, tires and ropes and, and so on. And we see St. George's using the ropes there. We, we see other, other functional equipment do you expect that we're going to see a continuation of that in the club rugby space? We know that in the professional environment, it's already being used. Yes, uh, um, JP, I think, again, uh, what, what, what COVID taught us that you have to go on. But it's also good to see what they do, especially with the ropes. And I saw some prowlers there and I saw the equipment. So some clubs really... The prowler, just let's just pause there for, for, for anyone who... Folks, just for the record, the prowler is not the, the burglar that's coming through the window. <laughs> I think what Jerome is referring to is the prowler. You Explain it to us, Jerome. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, that, um, that you push with the handle and yeah. there's weights on, so you can add weights or you can take weights off. And guys push that and it's almost like to stay in a nice low position where you, or you push in a scrum or you counter up right, in a right. breakdown. So that that that's help a lot with that. So that's what the the role or the prowler that's is the for. That's the prowler. Yeah. Okay, now we know what the prowler is. <laughs> <laughs> but functional equipment. I mean, pays also. It helps. Um, it, it it it's uh, for if you don't want to be going to gym contracts and things like that. Uh, functional equipment, um, of course, yeah. is very popular. I mean, we're seeing international athletes yeah. that are, are using functional training equipment. No, definitely. I think, JP, it's a matter of thinking out of the box. Uh, as you can see, you know, a lot of the guys, are, some of them out in the gym. Some guys, I know, Paul Faith, you know, the guys are out in CrossFit, um, you know. So I think it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's just getting out there and doing something and I think having a plan. Um, like you see St. George's and that there, like the Prowler and, you know, they've got yeah. a fancy, yeah. I've, I've learned it tonight, a Prowler. <laughs> so I think it's it's good to see that they're making use of functional equipment and yeah. that they, um, yeah, the guys are training and, yeah, looking forward. Well, as you guys know, on a weekly basis, we give one of our lucky viewers a chance to win a case of Score Energy Drinks and a set of Cape Rugby TV masks, courtesy of CTG Sports. And what we do is we take a Club Rugby logo and we make some changes to it and then we uh, ask our fans on Facebook to guess the logo and you put yourself in the mix to, to, to win a case of score. So, uh, we've got a logo that I want you guys to take a look at as well. I'm not really sure if we should actually be showing Faisal Felton this logo, but we're going to put you to the test and see if you can also spot the logo. Right, folks, don't forget, you can, of course, go join us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV and uh, come to our Facebook page and see if you can uh, spot the logo. It's great fun. And, and in fact, it's one of those things that gets to show you, goes to show you. Um, well, th yes, there you see, that's some ideas that I was talking about uh, behind me over here. This is, of course, Rocklands, folks, for those of you that don't know. And uh, on my left-hand side, yeah, this is Hands and Hearts. And, now I've, and of course, uh, yeah, this is Titans that's busy with Busy Bees branding on it. But right. Um, Faisal, Jerome, see if you guys can, can spot the logo. Um, and uh, there we go. Um, Faisal, I, I'm, I should not be... You want to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Faisal, you of course know the answer to this question. Uh, you want to tell us the, the, the club name? Yes, uh, club I played for once upon a time, Primroses. Primrose Rugby Football Club. Jerome, do you agree? It's definitely Primrose. Definitely, pr definitely yeah. Primrose. And of course, one of your management structures, of course, coached at Primrose for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Papa G. 
<laughs> All right, folks, there you go. Congratulations to Rayan Mohamed. Rayan, you uh, win yourself a, a case of score energy drinks, a set of Cape Rugby TV masks, you correctly spotted the logo, and anybody else there that wants to join us, come to our Facebook page, come and enter there. It's great fun, and it really gives us a, a, a good shot at seeing, like, do you know your club rugby? We'll take a break. When we come back, we go down to Strand Rugby Football Club. Back in a sec. Welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV. It's great to have you along. You can see more jerseys behind me here now. And, of course, uh, there's UCT, uh, Marty's Rugby Football Club. Uh, that was a bit too quick. But, yes, uh, get your clubs to send their jerseys and put their sponsors on. Remember, if you're a local business out there and you like what you see uh, and you've got a club near you, this is what can happen. You can simply uh, get your um, logo on one of the clubs near you uh get them to put on the jersey and we will take the club jersey and put it on tv and you as a local business will have your business logo on television it's the kind of thing that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world we support club rugby and we try to make sure that the clubs out there get sponsorship in it um uh, from you the local business folks we went down to uh, uh, strand of course also pl uh, practicing at gastro where they share the field with st george's take a look at some of the action behind the scenes Rugby means a lot to the Strand community. As you can see, there's a lot of youngsters and a few first team guys here. But um, the preseason turnout has been good for us so far. Everybody's looking forward to a bit of rugby again. Um, we must be at the field. For many of the guys, it's like their only family. I really enjoy Strand Club. Um, it's my new home. I feel like the camaraderie is way better. Um, it's a big brotherhood. And I mean, we are like the underdogs in every game we play. Dat tel me nice in, man. Ons het, ons het, ons het een groot mentor ook nog van Loo Lazia. Wat voor ons nog uh, eindelijk hij tang, hij, 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 hij stoot gij. Om te, te kan soos hy kan sien, hulle is hard bezig, ons hard bezig om te, om vir ons recht te maak, net om sy voetstappe voor hem toe te vat, man. Van hy het vir ons baie geleer en wat ons hier gewiet het, wat hy vir ons kon gebring het as een klap. Ja, en maak eindelijk vir ons excited dat ons wat oud players is, om weer hier te kom, because hy van die man het besluit, ons wil nie meer speel nie. Because uh, that's because it's weer COVID, so we look not half a year for not fit make, and we must be able to use the and so on. But yeah, we have all the heat and the light that we have to do for our motivation. We have to be able to use it and to be able to use it. Not for us, we have stamina of the for and to do Ja, nie, definitief. Het is, uh, is lekker om weer op die veel te wees. Bieke geniet, bieke wegkom van die waar je bieke so stress en dan kan je bieke so stress afblaas op die veel. So, ja, goeie oefening en zo. So. Dat is maar waar, enige klap so fondatie begin. So, ja, as ons die fondatie recht leef vir die mannen wat die is, denk ek gaan ons een goeie seizoen voor en toe en een goeie succes voor en toe vir die jaren wat kom. Oh, Janne, ons is baie, baie, baie excited oor die hele, uh, oor die hele gedachte dat ons weet moendelik het dat we weer rugby gaan wees. Ik denk vir die jaar, uh, twee weke seer het ons laatste gesprek, specifiek met jou, <laughs> en toe uh, is die rugby gestop gewees. So, uh, ek hoop hier is a blessing in disguise, nou nie, whatever die keus my bie, maar ek hoop net, dat gaat, dat gaan, daar gaat definitief rugby wees. Ek het hopelijk, as niks verkeerd gaan nie, kom ons hier so, so, as hou duim vast, dat alles net uh, voor en toe recht gaan wees, en uh, Ons wil ook hier van COVID praat hier, maar ons blij moes in die man sy achterkop moes nou in elk geval. Maar soos hulle sê, die, 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 die nommers het afgekom. So die vreugde, die vreugde vieren brand al. Uh, die man is sy harte brand. Ek dink ons kyk so, ek dink in termen van april man as die league begin. So daar gaan friendlies gespeel op die club self, gaan speel al die reis die na week 7. So ons het twee spannige ente. Dat wees jy die by die die noodzakelike daarvan en hoe die melisse die man is vir die game. Ons moes, ons moes die players akkommodeer. Uh, ons gaan Westbank toe ook nog die naweek, ja. Welcome back.
back, everybody. It's, of course, uh, Strand uh, in action there, Faisal. Uh, um, we don't, we're not going to talk promotion relegation here at the moment, but Strand uh, in Super League C, but they've been, they've been doing a lot of good work in the last two years, or yeah. at least the last four years. Yeah, I, w I was going to say, I mean, they've been fantastic. I think the community, they've got the numbers, they got the support in that there. Um, yeah, so the Strand area, they're always very competitive in that there. Um, so we're nothing to do with the Lades family. No, no, nothing. I don't think nothing to do with the Lades family. Yeah. I think, yeah, they just got ample support in that there. Yeah. And we're looking forward, I think, to a good season for them as well. Uh, Jerome, um, of course, uh, Strand, like the rest of the clubs now, strength and conditioning, getting ready. Uh, I know I wanted to ask you this earlier on. You say it's a good idea to be playing friendlies, getting ready for friendlies. Um, and that a lot of uh, clubs must sort of be thinking about the fact that they must always be ready on standby in case you need them. Exactly, JP. Um, it's good to see that they, they're really working hard with the strength and conditioning. Um, as I said earlier on, we, we really, uh, our season stop in June, so we really, um, I'm glad the clubs are training and the clubs are playing. And you were also asking me earlier, and I wish they can play twice a week. The more they can play, the better they will become because we're going to need numbers uh, yeah. come mid-June uh, mid or before June. Uh, injuries are going to come in and we're going to rely on club players because we only allowed a certain amount of contracted players. That's the rule of SA Rugby. Right, folks. Well, of course, as you know, on a weekly basis, we go down to MCAM 24-hour pharmacy uh, to see what's, um, what's happening. And we, of course, go online to take a look at some of the public reviews that have been put um, on the uh, MCAM 24-hour pharmacy Google reviews or social media posting. Um, of course, MCAM 24-hour pharmacy is open 24-7. As you know, there's uh, free parking. There's the various clinics. There's a great coffee shop upstairs. The dispensary is available to help you. The orthopedic section is there to help you. Of course, there's the sports supplement zone upstairs. Um, it really, if it is anything that you need, then MCAM 24-hour pharmacy has got it for you. Mr. Malach and his team always aiming for the gold standard. Let's take a look at some of the public reviews then that came in over the last few days. Lubabala Nochikila says, The staff is always friendly with a guard outside to the pharmacists and the cashiers. The experience is all the same, friendly and welcoming. Lubabalo gave MCAM 24 Hour Pharmacy another five-star rating. And Desiree Buerta goes on to say, Mr. M has his heart and soul in the pharmacy. I've been using MCAM for 30 years. Great service, knowledgeable staff, excellent health product range. Special mention then for Andresa for her wonderful, kind and friendly assistance and knowledge. And then Nadia says, I use this pharmacy for the first time tonight for urgent medication for a family member. Clean, organized, well-stocked, and friendly staff. I appreciate that they're open 24-7. It's an invaluable service. And all three of those reviews, folks, a five-star rating. Well, that's pretty much what we've come to expect at MCAM 24-hour pharmacy. Remember, they're, of course, on the corner of N1 and Durban Road, open 24-7. Folks, we'll take an ad break. When we come back from a break, we'll take a look at what's happening with Western Bombers Rugby and the Curry Cup. Back in a sec. All right, folks, we're wrapping it up today. Of course, as you know, the extensions of club rugby lead into the world of uh, Curry Cup rugby and into the Stormers and, of course, high up and into the Springboks. Jerome Parvati is the head coach of the uh, DHL Western Bombers Curry Cup side. Jerome, um, second match under the belt now. Uh, first match, good win. Second match, a little bit harder. You've got another one coming up next week. How are things feeling in the camp? Yes, JP, I'm, I think the second game was, was tough against, against the Bulls. I'm glad our big brothers, the URC, the Stormers guys, could uh, settle that <laughs> score on Saturday. We lost to them on Wednesday. So the, you, the Stormers guys beat them on, on Saturday. So that make up. It's even now with the Bulls. But yeah, we're playing, we playing the Sox um, on Wednesday. Next yeah. Wednesday, we're playing the Sox. Um, looking forward to that game. I think the, the amount of experience the youngsters got from this, bull, uh, this Bulls game can carry us through to the Sox uh, game. The Sox also have a very experienced side. So looking forward to that game. So I'm not uh, doing any game analysis here, but I watched the game and I thought 
two things that jumped out for me was, firstly, I thought that your players were very fit. Um, and that certainly started showing evidence in the second half because if we looked at that last half hour of the game, you pretty much owned that last half hour. You, you had, it was your game in, all the way. Yes, JP, um, at halftime, my approach was you can now uh, break the guy's confidence. And I just said, look, guys. They couldn't keep up. Uh, they, were just, is, they couldn't keep it, up. It, with the way we can play and how we can play with yeah. our structure and playing wide and things, these guys won't last another 40 minutes. Yeah. So we just have to keep the ball, just keep the ball to three, two phases. And it helped for us. And then, and, and, I mean, the youngsters stood up. They actually scored 21 points in, in, in 30 minutes. My point exactly. Is that something that, I mean, that kind of thing must give a player a lot of confidence. When you've been on the back foot, but your coach tells you, just stay the plan, it will fall into place. And then it does fall into place and all the skills and practice and training actually starts working. Yes, JP, exactly. I mean, uh, also for coaches out there, you assess who you play against. Because there's a lot yeah. of spring box that you play against. I mean, it's not every day that a youngster play opposite Mornay. Mornay Stain, you get Bismarck, Duplessis, and so the list goes on. So um, as a coach, okay, you must the, have the... At this, at this stage of the game, you know, I'm beginning to wonder if you didn't in fact play against them back in the day. Um, folks, we're going we're gonna to take a look, catch up with some of the players behind the scenes. <laughs> Let's take a look. Ja, nee, kijk, dit, dit is rarig baie lekker. Um, vir ons wat dier elke geleentheid wat ons kry op die veld, rarig waar, ons geniet het en vir die boys om net weer te speel, dus het is rarig een uh, blessing en ons geniet het so baie. Ja, definitief, dat is een goeie mengsel van die spelers van die stommers en van die ondertoners. Ek dink, dit is een goeie recipe vir, vir wenspan en ons bou nog altijd en ek dink ons gaan een goeie seizoen as ons nou so aanhou. Ons nou obviously die twee games onder die belt, goeie eerste game, went in die lines en dan een tough out in die bille. So as allemaal sê, um, ons het baie slecht begint in die bille, om eerlijk te wees. Hulle het ons visies gedomineerd, maar ek dink ons het goed gedoen om terug te kom. En ek is nog wel trots op die comeback en het wees net al die positive signs wat ons gaan nou opbouw. It's a great opportunity. I mean, to test yourself against sort of senior players at a high level. Um, you know, you grow a lot. Also, being with like senior guys here, like Tim, who has been for like some time, and just learning from them. Again, growing as players, and it's something you'll be thankful for. Yeah, we try to bring that energy into the team um, on the field, off the field, um, and the way we approach the game is a bit different to the seniors. Um, we try to mix that together, try to take their knowledge, our ex our sort of exuberance and we mix that together and try and create a, a good brand of rugby so it's good yeah yeah very much i think we've been chatting a lot throughout the week about the game i'm um, excited we want to go out there and sort of put on a performance after the last game we want to redeem ourselves so yeah we're looking forward to it it's just really awesome to be back to have the opportunity to play rugby again uh, it's nice to have fans back in the stadium as well. I mean, for me personally, it's been a while since I last was, was out there on the field. I mean, it's nine months coming back now, so yeah, just really excited to get back out there. Necessary to have to, uh, to have the senior senior older players. It brings a bit of calmness and maturity, but at the same time, the youngsters bring a lot of enthusiasm and the willingness to just get out there and do their thing. So it's definitely a good balance to have. I think there's a lot of continuity going forward. Um, for example, myself, I also uh, have been coached under Coach Jerome. So it's nice to have those, those, uh, those ways that we used to and those techniques and the structures that we used to. So it definitely brings a lot of continuity to the side. Hundred percent, and it's it's nice to be back in another sort of, you know, format and playing with a, with guys a bit older and getting used to a high standard of rugby before going back to the junior comp later this year. So I think it's it's a great preparation for us and also just, you know, it's it's a goal a lot of us want to tick off, you know, we've always wanted to play Curry Cup, Super Rugby, Super Rugby's not even here anymore, but the Curry Cup's still here, so I think, yeah, we've just been grateful for the opportunity. You know, for the last two games, we've had Tim Sewell at 10 and he's, you know, he's been around the block, he's played 50, nearly 50 caps for Harlequin, so it shows, you know, whilst we have guys making their debuts on the wing, so there's a great mixture and I think, I think that's what's going to bring success and, uh, and we saw that in the first Lions game, 
and you know the Bulls game was just uh, you know a bit hard for that. Yeah, definitely, and I think it just makes that that uh, transition a bit easier, you know, mentally and physically. Um, it's nice having coaches, you know, they've backed us throughout the under 20 comp, so it's nice to transition that into seniors. And yeah, it just gives guys a bit more freedom to express themselves, which is which is great, especially for the younger guys like myself. <laughs>